Welcome to the ultimate Samsung battery test of 2023. Here we have the brand new Galaxy S23 lineup, the S23 Ultra, the S23 Plus, as well as the regular S23. Of course, we also have their predecessors, the S22 Ultra, the S22 Plus, and the regular S22. And for good measure, I've also thrown in the Galaxy A53, a more budget-friendly option. So let's jump right in with some YouTube. As always, all of them are on the same Wi-Fi network with Bluetooth and location enabled. There's no SIM card in either of them. And of course, I matched the brightness on all of them to keep it all fair. Now this test is very interesting because I don't really know what device will win. Last year I did a similar test and the S22 lineup wasn't as good as I had anticipated. They were about the same battery life as the S21 lineup, maybe even slightly worse in some cases. But this time around there's also a massive change. The new devices no longer come with the Exynos chip, Samsung's custom-made in-house chip. Now they come with the Snapdragon variant, which is so much better. It's great news for everyone around the world who didn't have a Snapdragon model before. Samsung does promise better battery life around the board, especially with the S23 and the S23 Plus model, not only just because of the new Snapdragon chip, but also because of the increased battery capacities. 3,900 milliamp hours on the S23, 4,700 on the S23 Plus, both are up 200 milliamp hours from their predecessors. Now the Ultra model has stayed the same at 5,000 milliamp hours, which is already a lot, so I think it should be fine. Now surprisingly, the budget A53 5G model also has a crazy 5,000 milliamp hour large battery. So I'm really curious to see how good the more affordable option fares compared to the much more expensive siblings. An hour into the test, there aren't really any big differences yet, but the new generation seems to be up a couple of percent compared to the S22 lineup. The display is the component that drains the battery the most by far on a smartphone. And if you compare them, the new and the old lineup, they're basically the same. The only change is on the smallest, the S23 model. Its display now gets a little brighter than the S22s, but that's really it. Apart from that, they're identical displays. Samsung does not hold back on the Ultra models. They have a 6.8 inch Quad HD panel, which of course would drain the battery more than just a 1080p panel. Now, if you actually want more battery life out of your Ultra model, you can step down the resolution in the settings to either 1080p or even 720p if you're really tight on battery life. But for this test, I kept them both at Quad HD because it's such an expensive device, I would use it to its fullest capacity and I think you should too. Now the Plus models have a 1080p panel at 6.6 .6 inches, still great panels, but they would obviously drain the battery less than on the Ultra models. And the regular S23 and the S22 also have a 1080p, but a smaller 6.1 inch display. Now the A model sits in between those at 6.5 inches, also 1080p. A huge determining factor of how much the display drains the battery life is also the refresh rate. That's how often the display refreshes the image. Now the higher the refresh rate, the smoother the content looks, but the more battery drain it's gonna cause. All of them actually go up to 120 Hertz, which is awesome. It looks really smooth, but there are a couple of major differences. The A53, for example, is fixed at 120 Hertz. You could either set it in the settings to 120 Hertz or 60 Hertz, and that's it. It just stays at that refresh rate that's obviously gonna drain the battery quite a bit. The smaller and the plus models have a variable refresh rate where you can reduce the refresh rate according to what's on screen. So for example, when you're playing a game, it's up at 120 hertz, but if you're just watching a YouTube video, it goes down to 30 hertz. But on these models, it is capped to 24 hertz. It doesn't go below 24 hertz. Here's where the Ultra models come in because they can variably adjust the refresh rate between one and 120 hertz. And that should, of course, drain the battery even less. By the way, if you're wondering why the displays are flickering, that's exactly that refresh rate changing. Because sometimes the refresh rate of the displays drops below the frames per second the camera is shooting at. In person though, when you're using the device, you cannot see this, so don't worry about it. At three hours, they're still surprisingly close, with the S23 in the lead at 81%, and the regular S22 in last place with 71%. What's surprising to me though, is that the regular S23 is beating the S22 Ultra. That's insane. It has a much, much bigger battery, and I'm quite sure that it's down to the improved Snapdragon chip. Now this trend actually continues with the S23 Plus firmly in the lead, and actually extending on its lead, which is interesting to see for sure. 
The A53 is actually doing pretty well, which is nice to see that the budget phone, so far at least, can keep up with higher end models. And the regular S22 is just falling behind. Now at the five hour mark, we're actually gonna do a standby test because we don't use our phones constantly, nonstop throughout the day. And as I had expected, the S23 lineup did better than the S22 lineup around the board. Not by much, to be fair, they were in standby for around nine hours and they lost anywhere between two and 4%, so nothing dramatic but the S23 lineup was better all around the board. Now at six hours, we're now gonna test the chipsets. I know this isn't something you do on a regular day to day, but I told you about these Snapdragon chips and hyped them up so much, we have to talk about them. All the new S23 devices come with the brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Samsung actually has a custom version of that, which is the four galaxy edition. But if we're being honest, it's just running at a slightly higher clock speed than the regular model. Now the S22 lineup all have the Exynos 2200 chip because I live in Europe and that's what we get here. If you live somewhere else, maybe in the US, then you will get the predecessor of the Snapdragon chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is much better than this Exynos chip. And you can see for yourself with these results, it is a massive, massive upgrade in terms of performance, not only in terms of CPU performance, but also in terms of graphics performance. The difference is just huge. The A53 has the Exynos 1280 chip, and it is quite a bit worse than the others, but that's because it's a more budget phone and obviously doesn't get the high-end chip. I'm so happy that everyone in the world now gets the Snapdragon model, which is just so much better than the Exynos chip. Now running all these benchmarks was obviously very demanding on the battery life. The S22 actually has gotten a low battery warning by now. We're now gonna record some 4K video, which is obviously very intense. And the regular S22 actually didn't make it all the way through. It was the first to go, which doesn't come as a big surprise. Didn't quite make it to the seven hour mark at six hours and 52 minutes. It's an okay result, but let's not kid ourselves. This is not good battery life. Now the Snapdragon model of it has better battery life, but otherwise, if you're looking for great battery life, definitely make sure to steer clear of this one. Now the next to go, and I couldn't believe it, was the S22 Ultra. At seven hours and 27 minutes, it's an okay result, but it is the Ultra model. Sure, it's the predecessor, but it's such an expensive device, it should do better. I blame the Exynos chip once again, and we have to keep in mind that it was running at Quad HD, so if you decrease it to 1080p, then the battery life would be better, but nonetheless, not a great result. At seven hours and 45 minutes, the S22 Plus died. Now, did the best out of the S22 lineup, but we're still not talking about amazing battery life here. It is a decent result, so if you're looking for a Samsung with good battery life, but don't want to spend that much, then you might consider the S22 Plus, but keep in mind the budget option, the A53, which costs a lot less, is still in the running. It's great to see though that the new S23 lineup does make good on its promise by providing much better battery life than their predecessors. The remaining devices all made it past the eight hour mark, which means by now they all have very good battery life. At eight hours and 16 minutes, the A53 5G died. A great result considering its price. Sure, it has a massive battery, but it still did really well nonetheless. Now, as I mentioned before, the display is fixed at 120 Hertz, which drains the battery quite a bit more than on the other devices, which all have variable refresh rates. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but you could drop it down to 60 Hertz to get even better battery life. In third place was the S23 at eight hours and 54 minutes. It's an insane result. It didn't quite make it to the nine hour mark, but it's such good battery life considering how small this device is. I couldn't believe that it beat the S22 Ultra and the S22 Plus. I don't know what kind of magic Samsung did. Sure, it increased the battery capacity by a bit, but it's amazing to see what kind of battery life the new Snapdragon chip can manage to produce in this device. It beat the S22 by two hours, which is just insane. Now, I did expect it to beat its predecessor, but not by this much. It's great to see that Samsung has fixed the battery life on the smallest model, because in the past I couldn't recommend them because the battery life was just too poor. You always had to sacrifice the battery life for the small form factor, but I'm happy to say that that is no longer the case. In nine hours only the S23 Ultra and the S23 Plus remain. The S23 Ultra was the first out of the two to go. In nine hours and 11 minutes, it is a great result. So if you're getting an Ultra, you will get incredible battery life, but just not quite the best. I'm curious to see how it compares to its Android competitors, as well as the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which has insane battery life. Make sure you're subscribed to not miss that video. The S23 Plus is still going strong. I actually had to fast forward this quite a bit because it nearly lasted another one and a half hours, which is just insane. At 10 hours and 40 minutes, it's an insane result. So if you want the best battery life on a Samsung device, 
get the S23 Plus. It's not surprising to me that it beat the S23 Ultra because it is essentially the same phone, just slightly smaller, but only running at 1080p compared to 1440p. Now keep in mind, if you drop the resolution on the Ultra model, you will get similar, if not better battery life than the S23 Plus. I'm very curious to see if either of the two can dethrone the current battery champ. Now, what do you guys think of these results as well as the S23 lineup in general? Drop your thoughts down below. Make sure you're subscribed to not miss any of my upcoming video. Watch this battery test next, and I'll see you guys in the next one.